So I'm happy with this, but I haven't put grease on all the pivots because I know I'm going to take the transfer case off again to replace the shaft. And what I've done is I've already replaced these Acme, uh, what do we call them, speed nuts? I don't know. But they're, they're already in here. And what you've got to do is you get a little taper punch and you will line up the holes like that. Just make sure they're already in. Make sure there's no dust, dirt or debris on the pieces that you're going to stick. You know, put your, uh, your tape down. If you're, if you're unsure there's any grease or anything like that on there, just put some brake cleaner on, give it a quick clean and you'll, all, you'll be alright. So let me get this set up and we'll put this piece of floor in. Um, yeah, and I'm going to show you something how I do these bolts down here. I don't know if you can see here, I've uh, notched round that bolt with a seal. Uh, I've come up to here, I know it looks a little bit off, but believe me, it'll tighten down. In the corners here, I've got still a little bit of, uh, I need to put some CLR to get that to rust stain off, but that's, that's not a problem. Um, I've just bent it round, and the closed cell form will, there's a little pucker here, it's, it's not really important because it'll pull down. Same in there, in that corner. So now we've got the floor prepped, we've got new nuts in there, oh I've got to put one in there. And then we'll uh, drop this floor in. So with the floor in place, this is one of the biggest problems a lot of Land Rover builders, you know, building from scratch, um, can have problems. And the reason is that uh, you don't know the distance between the seat base and the bulkhead until you put the floor in, because I've seen people with the, f the holes in the floor way out, and because they haven't shimmed the bulkhead, properly backwards and forwards it's quite a concern but I'm quite confident that this one's okay now a lot of people do make a mistake of going like a bull at a china shop and putting the screws the acne screws or the you know the self tapping screws type thing and tearing the seal so what we're going to do is going to use our old solder now and this isn't my new one this is the old one and we're going to warm it up, eventually, if it will. I don't know if it's going to work, I might have to give it a tap. Sometimes giving it a tap works. The connections are really bad. But what you do is you, you, you just pop the holes in, you look for the holes, and you pop them in. Right? And, and what that does, it aligns up, it, it burns the seal a little bit, that uh, plastic seal. Um, so that when you put the screw in, it's not going to tear the seal. Because otherwise it will rip it round and you'll get water in and that's the last thing you want. So that's, that's basically it. I'm going to do that for all the rest of them. And I'm also going to use, where's it gone? Oh, I'm not prepared to this little um, punch to line up the holes. Right. But this is the bit I want to show you about. This is my idea and it's worked very well. So let me put this, some screws in and uh, then we'll work, uh, I'll show you what to do. So there you go, those are the floor screws and they just went in finger tight, quick nip down. Don't tighten everything down until you've got all the holes lined up. Now, I've got a bit of seal sticking out of there but I'm not too bothered about that because I'll just trim it down if you see what I mean. Um, <clears throat> now, what's the next thing? These edge ones here. What I do is this. You see I put screws on, like these ones, these Acme ones, usually it's nuts and bolts, well they stick up a little bit too high, but if you use the Acme nut as it is, put it from underneath, hold it with your finger, you can screw these down, but it's dead easy to get in and out next time. The problem why these are difficult to get in and out is because the heads rust up, but um, that's all I use, I use those, and um, you know, there's the, there's the Acme bolt, washer and uh, nut. We'll put that underneath and I'll show you what it looks like. So there you go, the seal trimmed off, that's all nice and tight, that's all down. Uh, these Acme nuts here, they want, they'll, they'll just the right size so they'll actually self-lock as you're tightening them up. So you don't really need another spanner underneath and you can see they're nice and flush. Uh, they're quite easy to get out. Now, if you notice, I put I did put another screw in that corner, even though the bell housing cover goes over there. Well, that was just to keep it in line so I can get everything in. 
So we know this, this body is perfectly aligned, you know, like from front to back. I didn't have to drill any holes out, except for one, this one. Now, pay attention, because I've, I've been building this piece, this car out of bits of scrap, because this was an old uh, LT77 gearbox originally, and this is the 300 TDI or V8 floor pan. I think this is a V8 floor pan. And there's actually two places for the bolts to go through. Unfortunately, the, the, it already had an existing uh, Acme nut here, but not here. So I had to drill the hole out, but as you can see, it wasn't no big deal. So, let's get the other side in. Right, so that's the uh, driver's side to us, or the passenger side to you, in, but not tightened up, because there's still a lot of wiggle room, because we've got to get those screws lined up. So the next thing, we've got to try and fit the tunnel. Now, I fortunately haven't got the handbrake cable fastened in yet, which might mean it's a lot easier because on a left hand drive it's a bloody nightmare with the handbrake cable, uh, with the handbrake lever in, to get the uh, tunnel cover in. I'm not really familiar with right hand drives because I've never done one for a long time. But hopefully everything lines up. So, um, let's give it a go. Um, everything's going well. The, I've got the reverse switch in there now. I cut it down a bit, put the wires on, put some cover around it. That's going to be fine. Let's give it a go. On the uh, cover, I decided to put the seal on, as an experiment, put the seal on the uh, transmission cover. I'm not bothered about this bit here, it's not making no difference in noise or anything. But uh, we'll, we'll see, because I might have to take it off again. But I thought I'd put it on here and give it a try, because usually you put the seal on the gearbox. But I, I'm thinking about, oh not on the gearbox, but on the, on the uh, floor. But I thought about doing this differently, it might be able to fit it a bit better. Hey, we never know. Let's give it a go. The cover fitted in seconds without the handbrake on. What a struggle we have because you see you can't get that corner down in here because the handbrake's really tight. So that's looking good. Um, <clears throat> let's try and get some uh, screws in. So there we go. All the holes lined up perfectly. No problems at all. Once you've got everything in, then tighten it up. Don't ever tighten anything up until every screw is in. That's, that's a rule for thumb for all mechanic in. Don't, don't just tighten bolts up because you'll never get the rest in. But I have got a problem. See the gear stick there? It's, it's sort of overhanging because of that great big thick lever. Now, let me, how can we explain this? Um, it's got a very short stroke. I'm thinking tomorrow, I'd like to keep that lever because Jim's going to make me a, a vinyl cover um, for the transmission cover and I'm thinking about warming up, taking this lever out again and warming it straight, just making it straight so it would be wait a minute, like that a neutral and then, it's, then in second it would be like that, that would be perfect it's one of those things you never find out until you get it all there, but um, that alternatively is take all that rubbish off the uh, outside. But the nice thing is I can take the gear stick off, uh, the, the mechanism off, without taking the tunnel out again. But even then, taking the tunnel out is a dream. I wish I'd thought about taking the handbrake cable off late ages ago because it was so easy. Anyway, it's in. Now the next thing I've got to do is sort of make a form to go around there for uh, noise and things like that. But let me work on that. Oh, I don't know. Tomorrow's a busy day tomorrow. Um, but at least it moves. You see, this was the original um, sort of Defender Gator type thing. I don't know. I found that in the sh on the shelf. It's not. It's off a right-hand drive, obviously. Or is it? Which way around does it go? Oh no, it goes around like that. So it's off a right-hand drive, but it's a very early one because it's that very hard plastic. Well, that's no good. That's not going to work. But Jim can make me one out of vinyl. You know, like uh, black vinyl. It'll look quite nice. But you can see the placement is not bad at all. You know, another few inches, but like I say, another inch further forward would be perfect. But I'm, I'm really chuffed that all the bolts lined up.
without any hassle. And the beauty about doing it like this, and this is, this is one of the principles about doing this conversion, I can then put genuine rubber mats on that is going to fit perfectly without any cutting or trimming. That's the key, you see. So everything fitted, the, the, the kit worked out great. There is one screw that needs to be longer and I shall show you which this one it one. is. This one is just too short to pull down. I don't know why. It's just on the limit of the uh, screw. It, these uh, screws are about 25 millimeter. If it was 30 millimeter, it would catch. So I think by doing this with my kit, I found out that um, if I uh, include a, a longer screw just for that one, that will make a lot of heartaches a lot easier. Also, these are on slots, so I've included a, a spreader washer for those. Uh, I don't think we've got much problem with the high and low shift. There's bags of room under here. You can drive a bus under there. And that's where the uh, original one went here. That's why they put this little lifter here, because this used to be here. So all in all, I mean, I scratched the paint a bit, but that doesn't matter. But um, yeah, it looks all right, doesn't it? I think I'm happy with it. Takes a lot to make me happy. <laughs> so, so we'll wrap this video up. The floor's in. Um, we'll, I haven't got any rubber covers. That's, I haven't got any rubber mats. I don't think I have. I know I definitely haven't got one for the tunnel. I would be very tempted to put one of those big full piece TD5 ones in. But man, they're expensive. I think they're genuine Land Rover only. Um, I don't know. We'll see. It's getting to the point of where we've put a lot of money into this. But I'm, I'm pleased how the way it's turned out and I'm really pleased at those tunnels so we can make a load of those now. Yeah, brilliant. Alright, making Land Rovers better. It's looking good. See ya.